His messengers flew on his creatures of the great day. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa sayyati a'malina man yahdihi allahu fala mudillalah wa man yudlil fala hadiyalah أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. My name is Abdul Bari Yahya, and today we will be speaking about the characteristics of a da'i. This is a very important topic in that when we speak about da'wa, one of the arkan or one of the pillars is the da'i, the person who is calling. And what are some of his characteristics? As with every other actions and every other deeds in Islam, one of the most important things you have to have in order for any action to be accepted is sincerity. So the first action or the first characteristic that a person who wants to call to Islam has to have is sincerity. Sincerity in that he's calling to Allah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Because if he's calling to Allah in order to achieve any of the worldly affairs, worldly matters, then it will be against him on the day of judgment. And if he's calling for any other reasons, then he's really calling just for himself. And in Islam, your deed will not be accepted. And with specifically, when it comes to da'wah, sincerity is very important because when a person is in position where he's calling others to Islam. He has to believe in what he's calling to, otherwise it's not going to be successful. And he has to be sincere in what he's calling to. And if he doesn't believe what he's calling to, of course he's not going to be sincere. And so, a person who calls to Allah, if he is sincere, the reward is very great. But at the same time, the punishment is also great for somebody who is not sincere. In fact, anyone who is not sincere, who is doing it for the purpose of this worldly matters or some gain in this world, whether it be wealth or reputation, he will be amongst the first people that will be thrown into the hellfire. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned about the three people who will be thrown into the hellfire before any of the other people. The first one is a mujahid, a person who strives and who fights for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he's doing it because he wants to be known as somebody who's courageous, and it's known. And so he will be the first one. The second person though, is a person, al-qari, or a person who is a scholar. But he learns the Qur'an, and he reads the Qur'an, but why does he do it? He does it to show off only. And so if somebody does that, on the Day of Judgment, he will come forth in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah will remind him of his favors. Remind him of the favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon him in this life. And he will admit to the favors. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him, what did you do in this world? And he will say, oh Allah, I learned for your sake and I taught for your sake. In other words, this is a person who is a da'i or a person who recites the Qur'an, and he's influential probably most of the time in the community. People know him and so forth. But why does he do it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him, and he will say, I did it for your sake. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, you have lied. And the angels will say, you have lied. Indeed, you only did it because you wanted other people to say that you are a scholar, or that you are a qari. So you wanted to do it for reputation purposes, and that's what you got. But this is very dangerous because this is first people who will enter the hellfire. And so when a person calls to Allah, you have to be sincere. Meaning the message that you are trying to get across to people, you want people to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to worship Allah, and you're doing it so that Allah will reward you and you're seeking the pleasure of Allah alone and for no other reason whatsoever. Because when a person does that, when a person does that, then it also gives them motivation and it gives them also 
the strength to continue on. Why? Because one of the signs of sincerity is that you do things and it doesn't matter to you whether somebody praises you or criticizes you. Al-Fudayl ibn Ayyad, he said, one of the signs of sincerity is that praise and criticism are of the same level. In other words, if somebody gets up on the mimbar, on the pulpit, and delivers a speech, and he finishes with the speech, there might be some people who will criticize him or say certain things about him. But if he did it for the sake of Allah, and he's hoping in the reward from Allah alone, it will not faze him. In other words, he will take the criticism, and he will benefit from that criticism. He won't be mad, he won't be angry, and he will try to improve. But he knows himself that he's tried his best already. And if somebody praises him, it also does not change anything inside that person that die. Why? Because when you are doing something for the sake of Allah, you don't do it for other for the praise. And so whether somebody praises you or not, you know that you are doing it for the sake of Allah only. So praise and criticism are on the same level. In other words, it doesn't phase you. And so this motivates you also. And you do not stop doing the good because you're worried about the people. And also, you don't do it for the people. So this is something, this is a point that you have to be very careful about when it comes to sincerity. And that is when you do something, if it's a good deed, don't stop doing it because you're worried somebody might praise you for it or something like that. No. If it's a good deed, just say Bismillah in the name of Allah and go forward and just do it. But if you are leaving a good deed, then it's considered riya. If you're doing a good deed but showing off to other people and not sincere, being insincere, then also that's riya. So if you go to the masjid and you only do it because you want to show off to other people, then that's also known as riya. But if you leave it because you're worried that other people might say this and that, and you might be worried about your sincerity, and you don't go to the masjid, that's also riya, because you have left a deed because of the people. And if you do it for the people, and if you leave a good deed because of the people, it's the same, it's considered riya also. And so, if a person who is sincere, he's motivated and he goes forward, and it gives you the strength to go forward, no matter what the circumstance and the situation is, because you're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And also, if you are sincere as a da'i, if you are a teacher, if you are a person who's teaching other people or trying to propagate this message, you do not care and you do not worry who actually is bringing or propagating or speaking or telling the other person. Why? Because it doesn't really matter. Because your intention is to teach somebody who is ignorant. And if somebody has done that before you, do not be jealous or do not be angry at that person because he has beaten you to it. Because the main reason that you want to teach is not because so that people will say, oh, I learned it from such and such person. No, your main objective is to have that person who is ignorant be learned or be knowledgeable or correct that mistake. And so it doesn't really matter whether that correction is coming from you or whether it's coming from another person. So if you're doing it for the sake of Allah, then if the other teaches it, you don't say, oh man, I knew that I should have taught them first. No, because as long as the objective has been done, then alhamdulillah. And that's why one of the great examples, one of the great sayings of one of our great scholars is what Al-Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah said. He said, ما ناظرت أحدا إلا وتمنيت أن الله أن الله يظهر الحق على لساني. I have never debated with a single person except that I wanted Allah to bring the truth out from His tongue. In other words, I wanted Him to be correct so that I would learn from it also. That is a sign of sincerity right there. In that when you're discussing, debating somebody. Most people, if you're not sincere, you want to win and defeat the other person. Maybe it's for pride purposes, maybe it's for other reasons. But a person who is sincere, 
does not care where the truth is coming from. And if he does not have the truth, then the other person has it, then Alhamdulillah, he has learned something new. And he's happy. And so that's why when a person is calling to Allah, and he's teaching, he's doing something, he's propagating the da'iyah. Person who propagates this religion, he has to be sincere. And so that's one of the most important characteristics. Another very important attribute that you have to have is that you have to act upon what you teach. Act upon what you know and what you teach. Because if you do not do so, then you are putting yourself in position to be detested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Al-Quran Al-Kareem, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لِمَ تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ كَبُرَ مَقْتًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَن تَقُولُوا مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O you who believe, why do you say that which you do not do? Greatly detested in the sight of Allah that you say that which you do not do, that you do not act upon. So we will break for a very short break and we will come back and we will continue insha'Allah about the characteristics of a da'i. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back and we are speaking today about the characteristics of a da'i. And we mentioned the first characteristic was ikhlas. Sincerity, a person has to be sincere. But also, if you learn and if you know something, then you have to apply it. Otherwise, again, you will be detested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كَبُرَ مَقْتًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَن تَقُولُوا مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ Indeed, detested in the sight of Allah that you say that which you do not apply or put to practice. And so, a person who applies what he teaches, also the person who is listening will also sense and will see it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put barakah in the words of those people. If you are sincere and you're applying what you're teaching, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless what you have. And also, if you are not applying what you are teaching, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa gave a grievous warning in hadith in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, a person will be brought forth on the day of judgment and he will be thrown into the hellfire with his intestines hanging out, with his guts and intestines hanging out and coming out of his stomach. And he will go around his intestine just like a donkey goes around a mill. And so the people in the hellfire, the people in the hellfire will come and they will say, oh so and so, what is wrong with you? What has happened? Didn't you used to tell us to do things? To do good? Didn't you call us to do good? And didn't you used to forbid us from doing the evil and from doing bad? From committing sins and so forth? And so he will say, yes, but... I used to tell you to do things, but I would not do them. And I used to forbid you from doing things, and I would do them. And so this punishment that this person is getting, is going to get in the Day of Judgment for not acting upon what he teaches is so great that the people in the hellfire are stunned by the type of punishment, and they're stunned because they see him. They are amazed that, or they're are surprised to see him because he used to tell them to do good and forbid them from evil. But the reason why he's in the hellfire and he's being punished worse than the other people is because he is not acting upon what he knows. And so a person who calls to Islam and he has to apply what he learns. If you do not apply what you're learning, the example of that person is like somebody who burns himself. He's burning himself in the darkness of the night so that people can see the path. But he is harming himself. 
His body, his clothes is burning and others benefit from him. But he is being burnt by that fire that is giving the others light. And so as a Muslim, we have to apply what we teach. And another characteristic, another attribute of a successful da'i, and this is a very important attribute because people will not accept from you if you do not have this attribute. And that is truthfulness. And that's why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was known as the trustworthy one, Al-Amin, the one who is trustworthy. In fact, he was so trustworthy that people, even his enemies would entrust him, entrust the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with their wealth. If they wanted to travel, if they wanted to go somewhere, if they wanted to leave the town and they didn't have any place to leave their wealth, they would leave it with the Prophet So he was almost like the halal bank of Mecca during those days. And that's because he was so trustworthy. Everyone trusted him. And when he got up on Safa, the mountain of Safa, what did he say? He said, if I told you there is a cavalry right behind this mountain, would you believe me? What did they say? They said, why would we not believe you? ما جربنا عليك كذبا. In other words, we have never experienced a lie from you before. Why would we not believe you now? And so, one of the most strong requirements of a da'i is that he has to be trustworthy. Another incident that shows the importance of truthfulness and trustworthiness um, is a story that occurred with one of the du'at, one of the mashayikh, or one of the people who used to give the khutbah and call people to Islam. And people trusted him. And so there was this brother who called. And he called the sheikh, and his wife picked up the phone. So the other person on the other side of the line, he said, can I speak to the sheikh? And so she pushed the mute button thinking that she did push the mute button, but she actually didn't. She pushed the wrong button, another button. And so the person on the other side is still listening in, can still hear everything that's going on. So the wife says, um, such and such is on the line. What do you want me to say to him? And so he said, tell him that I'm sleeping. And this whole time, during this whole time, he can hear. The brother who's calling the sheikh, he can hear this whole conversation. And immediately, he hung up the phone. Why? Because he didn't trust him anymore. Because if a person is still awake, and he's telling him to tell him he's asleep, and he's going to lie about these matters, why, why should I trust this person when it comes to my religion, and when it comes to my deen, which is so much more important? And so that's why a person who is somebody of influence, and people trust you, especially when you're calling to Islam, it's incumbent to be trustworthy to be sincere, to have these characteristics, attributes that we are speaking about. And trustworthiness and truthfulness also requires a person when he speaks about something and he says something and he has listened to somebody else or he's gotten that from another book and so forth, you should attribute it to those people. And by attributing it to those people, it shows your humbleness also. And it also, it also helps the da'wah. Why? Because if you are taken from another person who's a da'i also, you are raising the reputation of that person also so that people will benefit from that person. It shows your sincerity. And if you're reading from, you got something from a book, mention the source. If you heard it in a lecture, mention the source. Tell them that you heard. If you heard this, for example, the fatwa from such and such, mention the sources from this person and that person and don't attribute things or don't say that these are your own words if you have taken it from other people. And by doing so, it also brings the dua. Those people who are doing the same thing, who are calling to Islam, you are raising their reputation, making the other people, the general people, and making other people love the scholars, and this is the objective, is to you know, raise the level 
of your brothers who are doing the same thing, uh, who are calling to Islam and so forth. And it's a sign of sincerity of the individual and of the people. And so when you're calling to Islam, you also, besides you know, having sincerity and following up with what you teach, doing whatever uh, you can, you have to have the zeal and the love for your brother in that you want others to have this message. You want other people to have what you have. Because if you're thankful of what you have, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase it for you also. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase it for you. And so a da'i has to have these attributes. And we also uh, mentioned before that you also have to have knowledge. And this is, of course, one of the core things. Because if a da'i does not have knowledge, then he's going to be calling people to do things that might not be obligatory. And he's calling them to do things and saying that it's obligatory. Or something that's haram, and he's calling them to it. Or something that's not haram, and he's telling that it is haram. So you must base your knowledge of the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam as a da'i. And you have to also make people love knowledge and make people appreciate it also. And so sometimes there are certain things that you have to, there are certain things that you speak about all that you can, but you know, if there are certain things that are not appropriate in certain areas, then you should not do so if that is the case. Uh, an example of which is, if you see somebody, if somebody is asking a question, uh, and they are asking that question, and they're saying like, oh, Sheikh, such and such people, uh, or such and such Sheikh said this, how could you say such things when the other Sheikh says this and that? Well, if somebody says that and asks about that, then immediately, you know, some of our teachers would not answer that person because they're putting the du'ats against each other. And so you have to not only yourself apply you know, great manners and so forth, also teach the people who are asking those questions also, the manners also. And so this is something that all the du'at that we also have to try to do is apply good manners amongst ourselves and then of course teach those whom we are teaching of course the proper manners of learning and the proper manners of doing that which is obligatory upon them. So this is all the time that we have uh, for today. We hope that you can join us again for the next time that we have the art of da'wah. Wa jazakumullahu khayran wa sallallahu ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. He created the universe To him belong the heavens and the earth The ever living he is the first, he's the owner of mercy, he sent his messengers.